Life throws us daily challenges. Living with depression or anxiety can strip us of our joy. At Spiritlift, our goal is to provide helpful insight to make your life's journey easier. Welcome to Spiritlift, a journey to a better you. If I'm someone who, who let's say I have a daily prayer ritual, I have a meditation ritual, I do, what is that, I don't know, what is yoga, <laughs> exercise, et cetera, whatever it is, things that just make me feel good overall, I have good relationship. I mean, that's not to say that something's just going to come and hit you over the head like a hammer and you're not going to know how not to deal with it, right? I mean, even the yeah. most, let's say, quote unquote, types of enlightened people have bad days, right? They do like, and that's the thing is that the difference between somebody who would consider themselves enlightened and somebody who would, um, I guess, not consider themselves enlightened is that when you start to understand all this knowledge, you start to realize that the negative and the positive are interconnected because everything is right. And everything has that pull. So what you do then is you start learning how to use the negative as fuel right? You use it, you transform it as opposed to resisting it. So res it's, it's really funny when you think about negativity, when you think about things that happen to you that you consider negative, um, we tend to create more problems out of it because of the way we perceive it uh, and resist it. As opposed to, again, that observership basically allows it to flow through your life and not stick and stay with you and create more pain and create more problems because the body is very much an energetic vehicle. It's like a battery. So the more you hold on to energy, specifically emotion, so electric motion, it needs to move. And so when you hold on to things, you get sick. And then we wanted to talk about like, you know, working with negativity. While there's people that I would consider to be magicians of this frequency, look at Kobe Bryant when he was alive. Oh, yeah. Kobe Bryant was an alchemist. This man had a room that he called his muse cage, okay? A muse cage of everything that was dark to him and made him feel pain. And he would go in that room and feel the pain and use it as fuel to just destroy on the basketball court. And Wait, he talks about this. There's actually YouTube videos about it. Sorry, Nicole, stop right there really quick. W please talk about that. That's very important because I think what people mm -hmm. sometimes don't understand is that only tapping into this sense of, okay, everything's going to turn out good today. Everything, you know, the mantra, the, the energy frequency you tap into every, that's all great. Let's not disregard that. But I think it's really important what you're saying right there about the, like the pain room, right? Like, and how that's fueled. Michael Jordan's the same way, by the way. He was like, I mean, mm -hmm. him and Kobe were just at, you know, the mm -hmm. finest form. Yeah. But I think, please explain how those, um, let's say pain points or pain situations can, if we utilize in the right way, can be for us. Uh, we can use it yeah. as fuel. Like explain it because that's not easy to understand, yeah. but it can be powerful. Can you explain that more? So once you understand energy, once you understand the poles of polarity and you understand frequency, then you can kind of tap into what that means. Because you know, the funny thing is, is that most of the people that I know that are all love and light, new age, hippy dippy on that, a lot of those people, not all, are very unhappy. There's some of the most anxiety ridden people that I know and God love them, but it's just so and, and seeking why? only why? pleasure because seeking only light, seeking only pleasure. Guess what that does? What, what pole you're sending yourself to? It sends you to the negative polarity. Seeking only pleasure. Let's say I only eat ice cream every day. I only want pleasure. What's going to happen? I'm going to get sick. I'm going to be 500 pounds in a couple of years. So when you think about um, people that go after pain specifically for a positive reason, think about going to the gym or being disciplined, right? Discipline. I go to the, if I go to the gym every day and I put myself through a ton of pain, what's going to happen? I'm going to feel great. My body is going to transform into something positive. So when you start to seek pain for the sake of something positive you are now using energy as a master you are going after the experience to create something positive i know that's kind of, that is kind of a bit of a mind uh -huh. f <laughs> yeah 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 but like th think about really really wealthy like celebrity types half of them are in rehab what if they have everything that we perceive that we would want right to be happy seeking pleasure seeking fame money and I've had experiences where I've gone through times where I've 
made a ton of money. I had a business that made 1.4 million in one year and I was the most unhappy. I was actually suicidal. I was very, very unhappy at that part of the point in my life. Um, and again, I, I start to think about the things that you chase in life kind of sometimes end up being the opposite of that frequency. So it's, it's, it's interesting to think like, you don't think about going after painful experiences, but using them or another example I'll use is uh, childhood. People have, most people have a lot of childhood pain from something. For me, um, one of my childhood pains was not feeling seen or feeling like um, people didn't recognize me. So what that did, how I use that as an adult is it motivated me to be seen or to um, be successful. So again, a negative into a positive, it, it motivated me and fired me up for success because my inner child wants to be seen in some way, right?